I am back with another video out for you all. Today's video will be all about the lovely realm of Inkanomiya. Inkanomiya is the new realm that was introduced back in 2.4 and I think it's about time I make a quick exploration guide all about how to explore Inkanomiya, how to get the best rewards, or just anything along the lines of that. If you find any of these tips helpful, let me know. Or if you'd like to suggest a tip, put it in the comments and I'll make sure to check it out. Let's get started! One thing you'll notice right away is the day and night switch for Inkanomiya. There's two modes, which is the daylight time and there's also the night time. It has fancy names, but that's just how I like to identify it. But as you know, the main mechanism is right above this tower. Around the realm, there will be a bunch of switches for you to be able to switch to both types of day and night really easily. But a place that I like to go to often is right here in the Evernight Temple. The reason why is because one of the switches is right next to the teleport waypoint, so if I need to quickly switch to day or night, I can just teleport right here and then come over here and play the cutscene. And here we are in the darkness. If you want to mark the spot in your map, I highly recommend doing that, so if you ever need to come here really quickly or if you need to switch to the different settings of the daytime and nighttime and you don't know where to go, here is a really good spot for that because it's so close to the teleport waypoint and you just have to come here, switch back, and do what you need to do. The next big thing of Inkanomiya are the key sigils, which are located around here and they're also floating around in the sky, so if you've been exploring, they'll pop up on your map. They're kind of like the Geoculus and Amoculus of Inkanomiya, except you have to put them in these places in the walls instead of give them to a statue. The thing about these is that the key sigils are located all around the map and then the places to put them in are also located all around the map. So it's not just one location. Some places only have certain symbols. There's five different key sigils. So some places might only have like three, like this one. And the key sigils to insert in the wall are going to be floating around the area, so you have to basically go out and find them. The way that I did this was collect all the key sigils first. So I went out to use the interactive map and located all the key sigils so that I could quickly put them in all in one go. At that time, the interactive map was not that updated, so you couldn't mark as found all the key sigil input places, so I wanted to do it all at once so I don't have to get confused. If you also want to, you can use the markers on the map and just show the places that you've gone to already, but sometimes they get kind of confusing, and if you've already reached the maximum markers, then it isn't always the best solution. You don't exactly have to do it the way I did because I went out and just found all the key sigils first and then put them in the wall right after, but I feel like that kind of increased my efficiency because I didn't have to go jump up and down all around to go find these. I could just find them all in one go and then put them in all in one go. The rewards are also pretty good, so if you want some easy primo gems, this is the way to do it. Now, Enkanomiya is one of the first realms with basically a bottomless pit, so traveling can be really difficult, especially if you don't have the right team for it or if you need to get from a low spot to a high spot. Enkanomiya is all a bunch of different islands and it's really hard to get to certain islands if you don't have like a pathway, so it's really difficult to get to those specific islands. But don't worry because there are tips to have easier transportation all around Enkanomiya. These things are phase gates and they're similar to like the Electro Seelies. Something like this is also located on Surat Island where you have to go through the gate when it's turning the right direction. But the thing about this is all you have to do is walk forward and you turn into a little Electro Sealy. This will directly take you to where you need to go and will automatically drop you off right there. If you want to jump or if you want to go out of the path in the middle, you have to just click jump and the jump button is right here. This is a quick way of transportation if you don't know how to get to a certain island. So look for the phase gates. They're also on the interactive map. So if you need those phase gate locations, check out the interactive map. The interactive map will be your best friend during exploration anytime because it gives you chest locations, challenge locations, or basically anything you need. Another big traveling tip that I have is using the gadget from the Inazuman Reputation. This one allows you to glide faster through the air so you don't have to take up as much time. So let's say if I wanted to get to this island, all I had to do is activate the fan which is in my inventory and then fly right over. The duration of the Red Feather fan is pretty long so you'll be able to drift from island to island. It'll also allow you to go to higher places because you spend less time in the air. I find this really helpful not just for Inkonomiya but basically anywhere where I need to do quick transportation, especially during commissions if I have to fly from certain places. Also if you have any of those challenges where you need to beat the time, this helps too. If you haven't done your Inazuma reputation, I highly recommend doing it because the rewards are pretty good for it. An example of that would be this gadget. If at the time you didn't know what the gadget does, well, now you know, and it's great for gliding movement speed. 
So let's say it's your first time in Ankonomiya. What do you do first? There's so much to do and you don't exactly know how to get through with it. You would be arriving over here in the Serpent Balls, which is this location here. I really recommend starting with the storyline or doing the main story quest to get a little bit of some knowledge about the area and ways you can travel around. If you're feeling a little lost, you can look up the map or use the interactive map and let the quests guide you instead. Don't start with exploration right away because you want to get a little bit of information and sometimes finishing quests will allow you to unlock certain quests and also certain rewards. I remember there was a quest over here in this area and you had to finish it if you wanted to do other places or if you just wanted access to these other islands. Some of the world quests that might seem insignificant to Ankenomiya are sometimes the good ones that you want to do first, so make sure you're going and doing those first before you start exploring and collecting the chests. If you want to use the same tip that I used earlier, which is marking down all the quest locations, that is really helpful, especially for a place like this where it's easy to get lost. You might want to do the quest that allows you to unlock this boss because you might need the materials for it as well. Prioritize the storyline and quest before you go out and do your exploration. So if you haven't finished that Archon quest yet, or if you haven't done that world quest, make sure to do it first before you go out and say, I want 100% of Enkonomiya. Trust me, you'll thank me later. So let's say you've finished everything you need to do and now you're ready to explore. What kind of team is best for Enkonomiya? A lot of the enemies you'll be fighting are those new ones that were introduced in 2.4 as well, the ones that take away your energy. And also you'll be doing a lot of running around, gliding and sprinting, so you want the best team for that. If you have Sayu or if you've built her, I really recommend using her because her elemental skill allows you to move a lot faster. So if you're only looking for speed, Sayu is really recommended, or if you have Mona or Ayaka. You also might want a healer as well because there is no statue of the seven for you to heal here, so having a healer on hand will be pretty handy along exploration. Have a character that's elemental burst doesn't take that much energy, but again this is just a really small thing. You don't have to exactly worry about this because if your energy recharge is high enough then it wouldn't be that much of a problem and if you're not even fighting those new enemies then you won't have to worry about it at all. Just don't have a full-on exploration only team where you have a bunch of low-level characters and you're just walking around because you have to fight a bunch of enemies as well. There's a ton of ruin guards in the area and there's a bunch of those surprise attack enemies so you might just be walking and it might boom out of nowhere there's gonna be like 50 ruin guards chasing you and a bunch of hilly trolls and abyss mages so just be aware of your surroundings and you might want a good main DPS for that. If you have any characters with passive talents like Kaya where he'll decrease your sprinting stamina or Venti or Amber use those characters because I'll know you'll do a lot of sprinting and gliding later on. This is my team that I use for running around. I have Rosaria for her passive, Kaya for his passive, Mona for her sprint, and Sayu for her skill. And all together, this is a really good, fast exploration team. If you have Kazuha, he's really helpful as well too. So as I told you before, there's going to be a bunch of new mechanics to Enkenomiya. One being the day and night switch, but also some of the challenges or like the mini puzzles you have to solve. If at first you don't know how to do the mini puzzle, I don't blame you because I was kind of confused early on. The mini puzzles can be really confusing, and if you don't want to do them at that moment, or if you think they're really difficult, then just mark them on the map and move on. You can come back to the puzzle later, or you can look up a guide, but don't let the mini puzzles stop your exploration flow. Let's say you're doing really well and you're going through all these chests and you just stop at this puzzle that's taking forever and you just don't know how to solve it, don't let that stop your exploration. Move on mark it for later and come back to it when you've looked up a guide. Sometimes when I'm stuck I might look up a guide for a certain puzzle but then I might get distracted and forget that I'm playing Genshin altogether. It doesn't happen often but trust me it still happens to me. A lot of the puzzles are involving the day and night switch so if you first like that cutscene where you have to look at that spinning triangle you might end up hating it a little later on once you've had to look at it over 100 times. My last tip to help with exploration is going to be splitting up your exploration with each island. I like to spend one day working on a certain part so I can just finish up the exploration for that area and then move on to the next one later. Instead of saying, first I'm going to get all the common chests in the area, then I'm going to get all the precious chests, it just doesn't really work that well and it might take up more of your time rather than just clear out one area, clear out the next area, and so on and so forth. 
So if you're in that certain area and you have the treasure compass, you might end up using that because it'll guide you to all the chest locations and you can get those first and then do the challenges and all the puzzles. I recommend doing that if you're looking for chests and doing challenges, but if you're doing the key sigils, I recommend doing the way that I showed earlier of just getting them all at first and then putting them in the wall. But if you're exploring in Konomiya, do it per island so that you don't have to keep moving around. And because these islands are kind of hard to navigate, especially in the Evernight Temple where there's just so much elevation and it's really time consuming to climb all the walls and go back and forth to every single place, splitting up the islands will take up less of your time if you want to go through Inkonomiya a lot faster. So that is it for the Inkonomiya exploration guide. I hope you found some of these tips helpful. I know I rushed through it a lot, so there'll be timestamps in the description if you want to go back to a certain spot in the video. Also, it was recently my one year of Genshin anniversary, and I can't thank you enough for all being here on this amazing, amazing journey. So thank you all, you are all amazing, and I really love all the support. I read all of your comments, and it just makes me smile to see them every single day. So thank you again, and I hope to see you in our next video!